Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia and this is part two of my Latinxathon vlog. Um, part one I'll leave a link down below if you're interested. Part one basically handled uh, or showed my um, reading live during the week of Latinxathon. Um, and um, there's still a few days left of the readathon and um, they fall on the weekend. So unfortunately it's not going to be very exciting because I've got a very boring weekend planned. But I will be including some reading um, here. I am uh, on page 202 of Blanca and Roja by Anna Marie McElmore. This, so I started this book last weekend and I got kind of distracted by some of the other books on my TBR for that next thon. Came back to this last night and it's good. <laughs> But um, the writing is not for me. It's a very flowery, very lyrical and poetic kind of writing. Um, I heard somebody described it as like the way Macklemore writes is telling a fairy tale. And I think that's very accurate. Um, and um, it's not my favorite kind of writing. It's also very, um, it's much more like character analysis based rather than plot based and I prefer plot <laughs> than just character analysis. I usually I like a balance actually um, but there's the the plot definitely goes slower here. On the other hand something that makes it easier to read is that the chapters are really really short and so like it feels like you're going through it really quickly. Um, the other plus of this is that I am invested in the characters, like even though I'm finding it difficult to get through like the, some of that heavier analysis and it feels a little bit boring because there's not a lot happening, I want to know what's going to happen and that's keeping me going here. So uh, right now it seems like it's going to be like a three star book for me, so solid and I think really great for certain kinds of readers, uh, but definitely not my favorite book that I've read in the readathon so far. I'm also going to start a book that's not going to be for the Nexathon. It's for my book club that meets um, this coming week, so and that's this one. Um, but I still have, I do have about an hour and a half left of um, Undead Girl Gang and I want to get that done this weekend because I have a few other books queued up for the week um, and because I, I've decided that the whole rest of the month I'm going to try to just read, listen to Latinx books, uh, books by Latinx authors and um, yeah primarily with a few exceptions in here uh, but I already have some kind of loaded on here so that I spend the whole month of Latinx Heritage Month uh, reading Latinx authors not just the week of the readathon. So just wanted to put that out there. Um, in terms of the rest of my day, uh, like I said it's going to be really boring uh, because I'm mostly doing work. My teaching is going to get evaluated during the week like I have in um, classroom observation happening on Thursday and uh, I am going to be preparing for that uh, for a chunk of this weekend. I still have grading to do. I actually did finish, by the way, all the grading that I had been talking about in the previous vlog. I finished that one, but now I have <laughs> a new grading to do. Hashtag Professor Life. i also been kind of working on my agenda, my planner for um, the next couple of weeks. Um, I use the passion planner for my work planning and I really love, this is one of the like kind of special edition colors that they have right now and uh, really loving it. This is also the medium sized one. They have a larger one and a smaller one um, and I have found that this is just the right kind of size uh, for me and one of the things I really love about this planner is that it breaks down the days and the week by week first of all and then by hour and I find that for planning like my work week this is really really ideal. Uh, I do have another planner that's more like personal stuff and that one is not broken down by hour like it just has like the three space chunks and I find that one is better more ideal for planning like personal stuff um, etc. Um, Another thing I thought I might share is that I am also putting together lessons for the week. Uh, there's a class I'm teaching that's brand new so that I'm 
I'm basically putting it together from scratch this semester. And we're gonna be talking about French colonial history this week. And so I need to put together those lesson plans. Um, I have stuff to draw from, but then I have some really cool books that uh, I'm gonna be referencing uh, as I plan those lectures and activities. Uh, one is this one. It is Paradise Destroyed, Catastrophe and Citizenship in the French Caribbean by Christopher M. Church. I've heard really good things about it and uh, I am hoping that there is uh, material here that I can take um, use for my lecture. I also have this really, really amazing one. Um, Black French Women and the Struggle for Equality, 1848 to 2016. So this is a collection of essays. Um, like articles written by different scholars and um, I just I love love the focus of this black women a lot of times people forget that there have always been black people in Europe and that that history matters and it's important and as a historian of France that is one of the hills I will die on um, and then this one's focusing more on Germany but I thought there might be some interesting things that I can um, relate to uh, France is absolute destruction Isabel Behold, and it's uh, sorry. The subtitle is "Military Culture and the Practices of War in Imperial Germany." Uh, part of what this book argues is that mm -hmm. basically that Germany is experimenting with different military strategies in the empire. Uh, Germany was pretty late to the empire game in terms of acquiring colonies and stuff like that because there really is no Germany until after 1871 um, and, but then they really launch an empire with full force and they uh, experiment some of, of their more vicious tactics in Africa and uh, a lot of that will also then be implemented um, during the world wars so really great book um, and <sighs> Got a lot going on in terms of work uh, this weekend, but uh, I might take you along for a few little fun things um, that I've got going on here and there. So stay tuned. Hi guys, it's the last day of Latinxathon. I didn't have any more updates for the weekend because it has turned out to be a really exhausting time for me. Um, yeah, on top of like struggling with depression and anxiety. This week I am getting evaluated. Um, there's a class observation happening on Thursday. Someone uh, is coming to my class to observe me and it is making me insanely anxious. Um, and then today I've been home for like an hour and a half. I've got the dishwasher running, the laundry running, I just fed the dogs, I've made enchiladas, dogs are coming and um, I posted a midterm study guide and I still have oh, oh, I'm exhausted and I've got a book club tomorrow <laughs> anyways instead of turning this vlog into a pity party I want to tell you about the last book that I did finish uh, by the end of uh, during Latinxathon and that is uh, Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson uh, it's a zombie book. So um, our main character uh, is Wiccan and she can actually do magic. She doesn't know it at first, but she finds all the ingredients for uh, a magic spell that will bring uh, her dead friend back from the dead. She's interested in doing this because um, everyone thinks her friend has committed suicide and she is sure that her friend would have never committed suicide. Um, so uh, she thinks she was murdered and that the only way to solve the murder, figure out who did it, is to bring her dead friend back. This turned out to be a really delightful story, this fight. <laughs> premise that might sound a bit dark. Um, it does deal with the serious issues of like suicide, depression, PTSD, um, but it's also about friendships, uh, friendships between girls, um, there's fat representation, the main character is Latinx, and I, I just, it was, a, it was a delightful read. Um, I think it's going to be a, a four, a four star read for me. I also have two other books, um, <laughs> dogs are going crazy, going right now. I still have Blanca and Roja 
by Anna Marie Macklemore that I'm reading. I'm about halfway through it. No, like a little bit more than halfway. Um, I'm just, I'm slugging through it because I, I'm interested in the story. So I'm not going to DNF it. I want to know what's going to happen. But the writing is so flowery, descriptive, and there's not a lot of plot. It's more of a character-driven story, and that is harder to read for me because I am more of a plot-driven reader. Um, I'm also in the middle of Shadow Shapers by uh, Daniel Jose Older. I really wanted to read more by him because I read Dr. Hill's Squad last month and really enjoyed it. I could just tell that Oled knows his history really well. So I wanted to try something else from him. Um, Shadow Shapers is a YA book um, about shadows in art. I don't fully know the whole premise. It's a fantasy, maybe a little sci-fi-ish. I'm still figuring out the book because I really only started it um, today. But um, so far so good and um, this is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want my reading of Latinx authors to stop with Latinx I wanted to keep going for uh, all of a Latinx Heritage Month and uh, so far so good. Um, there are a few exceptions to it like um, I just read my first Ruth Ware book because it was for my in-person book club that meets tomorrow uh, which I needed to read it and then a few I have a few things coming in on um, library loans that I'm gonna <laughs> okay I moved over here where there's more light so I can close out uh, this vlog to thank you all so very much for uh, following along uh, with me for watching uh, my Latinx thought uh, videos um, and let's keep going for the, uh, the rest of Latinx Heritage Month continue to read Latinx uh, authors with Latinx characters and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!